Your Life is an amazing podcast and it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. Everybody, welcome back to Go For Your Life, um, my podcast uh, that I'm co-hosting with Sparky. Let's not forget about that. And today I have a very special guest um, who is coming out with the documentary and I actually know Josh from Sea Shepherd, and um, I'd like to do uh, the series now with three other uh, amazing filmmakers, and they're all making amazing, important movies, um, which I think all have a vegan uh, message and a very strong message. And so today I'm talking with Josh or Giacomo um, about uh, On the Wild Side, which is a movie that he's uh, about to get out there or is already kind of out there but anyway let's uh, i'll let him introduce himself hello josh hello everybody hello carol how you doing hello sparky yes um do you actually prefer josh or giacomo like do you have a preference uh i do not have a preference i think over the years <laughs> uh it has shifted to my real name which is giacomo mm. so i guess now that's what people are using more but yeah don't really have a preference no preference no preference okay cool 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 and so um yeah we were so you know you do you still work for sea shepherd at the moment or um i've been uh, off the ship for over a year now mm-hmm. uh, for me the door is not closed but right now uh, last year i really wanted to focus on finishing the documentary and getting it out there so uh, although uh, before the documentary was something that we were doing on our time off mm-hmm. now i really wanted to uh, push the the accelerator pedal and mm-hmm. try to get it done so for now I, I just like took some time away from the ship and then who knows like i'm I'm definitely not done, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't close the door, so we'll see yeah. what the future holds. The door is always open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. And so, because I think that on the on the one side, what you're doing now is like, it, it also required a lot, a lot, a lot of your time, right? I mean, this is a very big project. It, it has been, yeah. Uh, making it, the post-production has been a huge task. Mm -hmm. Uh, And especially because this was the first time that I ever did a documentary or a video at all. (laughs) Uh, It was, everything was trial and error and error and figuring out step by step what to do. And everything took a little bit more time than it should really. Mm -hmm. But... uh, Yeah, because you're learning on the the job in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it it ended up being really, really good. And... um, yeah, I don't know. It, now it's it, it kind of goes ups and downs. Like there is sometimes that I really have a lot of things to do, and then sometimes that are a little bit more uh, relaxed. Mm-hmm. Like the calm in between the storms. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, so with like let's let's go back to the very beginning. So you how did like let's talk a little bit about what on the wild side is and how how did you even how did the idea start of of you doing this documentary so on the wild side is a documentary about the the different approaches that the anti-hunting movement has towards hunting and poaching and to try to bring it to a uh to a stop to try to completely stop this uh this practice that uh kind of doesn't make any sense and anymore in 2019 with 7.5 billion people on the planet Mm -hmm. and uh i don't know originally i just really wanted to do a documentary Mm -hmm. um uh i was thinking about it and then i was thinking what uh my skills were and what my contacts were and what would be my comfort zone Mm -hmm. and then they started that um, and then I just thought about like, oh, I should do a documentary about this person that does anti-hunting or this other person that I know that is doing a great job. And then I thought about the fact that there is a lot of documentaries out there that are about one specific topic. There is a lot of documentaries, for instance, about uh, poaching in in Africa or some about. Uh, Uh, Some documentaries are talking about um, uh, trophy hunting, for instance, and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And and I wanted to give a different side 
of this story, which is the side of all the people that are doing the great work, which is to oppose mm-hmm. this this thing, this poaching. And that is not always like it's somewhere else, it's somewhere far away, but is very often is in our own backyard. Mm-hmm. And we have to realize that that the all of us has to realize that we all have problems in our own area, mm-hmm. in our own area. And and that's what the documentary kind of wants to give that feeling about. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you look at a section, it starts from, the documentary starts with uh, poaching and hunting in Africa, which is the topic that everybody's against. Like mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. the war against trophy hunting or poaching of rhinoceros and stuff like that. But then the documentary go, moves forward and then you realize that it's not just about Africa. There is like stuff happening in Europe, in America, and mm-hmm. so on. So that's, that's what I wanted to do with this. And did you travel to a lot of different places also for the documentary? Yes, we did. We did, um, we did um, different trips. Uh, our first trip was around Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we did uh, that was the easier one and the cheaper one as well so that's why we started with that one because uh, that's where we are from most of mm-hmm. us are from Europe and uh, we had contacts of people where we can sleep at we mm-hmm. we borrowed our mom's cars to drive around <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, like, and yeah. it was something that we could try to arrange mm-hmm. uh, with not a crazy expense um, then next we went to North America And we went to the United States and in Canada. And then um, um, <clears throat> our sound guy and uh, two other videographer went to Australia. Mm-hmm. And then um, all of us got together again and went to South Africa and Kenya mm-hmm. together to do the, the last part. Mm-hmm. And so, like, how did you... So you were saying you, you knew a lot of people. So how did you get your team together, for example, for the movie? And how many people, how many people helped you? Like get this together. So the movie was a, a a a big effort from a lot of people that managed to either donate their time or uh, give pretty much uh, work for crumbles, like real like <laughs> peanuts or something like that. Like I don't know. Uh, and it was great. Like uh, like the if I look at the at the list of all the people that worked on the movie, like. Maybe 90% are people that are vegan, that care about this uh, mm-hmm. uh, this topic and all that sort of stuff. And it's really important. And that's really uh, what in the end made this thing possible was the uh, passion of these people. Because mm-hmm. uh, uh, of the compassion of all the people that wanted to support the project by donating money uh, mm-hmm. to our crowdfunding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that allowed us to go uh, around and do this film. So um, the core team was me and Rafa. Uh, which had this great idea uh, a few years ago, and then we started to think about it and uh, and plan it and stuff like that. And then we brought in uh, uh, the sound guy who uh, who's called Tim Khan, and mm-hmm. uh, we met him on board of the Sea Shepherd ship. He was doing sound for um, uh, one of those uh, Ocean Warriors uh, or uh, mm-hmm. Whale Wars productions, uh, but he was. Again, he's vegan for many years. He cared about the, this issue and stuff like that. So I was really happy to have him on board. And also, like, it was the first time for me and Rafa to switch a camera from photo to video. <laughs> so having someone that knew what he was yeah. doing mm-hmm. was kind of important. And uh, he really helped also, not just with the with the sound, but also, like, with his experience working in this kind of productions. And he helped us... Uh, uh in many other things including like you know like how to lead an interview i remember before starting mm. the first trip we were in our apartment in rome and i had all this stuff that i ordered and then tim arrived and i said like okay tim i think now we need to test it because i have never lit an interview before <laughs> and i have like all these lights here i don't know how to set them up and then he mm-hmm. was really patient we sat in my apartment and then we uh we set up all these like lights all around and and yeah it was really it was really really nice yeah and then um once this the shooting part uh shooting i guess in quotes in this case uh <laughs> was done uh, um we had to do all the post production and it was really good because we had uh um some other people helping out with the with editing because I didn't know how to edit at all <laughs> so there was like if I didn't know how to shoot I definitely didn't know how to edit and uh, <laughs> 
yeah. and edit a, a movie that is like 90 minutes long and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it was really good. I This guy, Robbie, we also met him on the ship. Then uh, through another guy from the ship, we met this girl uh, that did another part of the editing. And then... Um, um, in the end, uh, my friend uh, Giuseppe, which lives actually near here, that I knew him from uh, the music scene, uh, he had to finish it up completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was also like really cool because, you know, sometimes we needed some images and like I would ask people, hey, man, like there is this thing going on in Oregon and you live in Oregon. Oh, and yeah, you're yeah, a yeah, yeah. Right. Can you mm-hmm. give me a hand and can you go film it or something mm-hmm. like that? And mm-hmm. like there was a lot of that. So there's really is a huge effort yeah. behind this film and a huge, uh, you know, like uh, support ne- network yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that really is uh, well, that's also really, incredible. really sounds like, a, you know, like even making the movie was like a community project of all, you know, and we do. St- and I think that a lot of our, when it comes to animal rights activists, I think we do stand together. You know, I think that that's also the, to, to the, get, the to, togetherness of like, you know, wanting to support you. Or, I mean, the first time I, was, uh, I saw it as well, I was like, wow, they're doing this movie? What? Like, Joshua, what's going on? Like, it's it's amazing because you, you want to also, like, I think all these people wanted to be part of what you were creating, you know, because it's such an important thing you're doing. So, it's yeah, really I think cool. I think the, 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 the global effort was really, yeah, that's really so impressive. Nice. And it was really a mirror of what the animal rights movement is. Mm-hmm. You're completely right. Yeah. And like, speaking of uh, your series that you're doing, like Keegan was another person that I, I knocked on his, uh, let's call it virtual door and mm-hmm. to ask like, okay, well, how do I do it? What do I, what do I do now? Like mm-hmm. and something like that. And I showed it to him like, Oh, can you give me some feedback and all yeah. sorts of stuff? And he was always like, I met Keegan a few times. So we were, it's not like he's my best friend. He was always like, oh, look at this. It's awesome. Oh, why don't you do this? And why don't you mm-hmm. do that? Why don't mm-hmm. you contact this person? Yeah. And then there were other people that I met on the ship. And I said like, oh, I, I know this other person. Why don't you talk yeah. to him or her and stuff mm-hmm. like that? It was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Keegan, uh, Keegan is he, exactly as you're saying. He's also going to be interviewed for the series. Uh, he's, uh, you know, the director of Cowspiracy, What the Health, and his own movie now um, with Fiona. I mean, he's doing amazing stuff. Um, but he is also a self-made guy. I mean, he also didn't go to school for for filming or directing. I mean, he also really taught himself. So I think that it's super cool for him then also to be a mentor for someone else, you know. And, of course, I think he's one of the most amazing activists we have in, uh, in our circles. I mean, he's so great um, and has such a passion for his... I don't know, for animal rights and for bringing it out there. I think it's really great and because I think I was actually talking to Nacho and Carla, who are the owners of the Black Cat Cafe in London, and they saw your movie already. I was a bit jealous because I was like, I still yeah. haven't seen it. I can't <laughs> see it. Um, and they were actually saying exactly that. They were so impressed by, uh, I mean, the whole movie is great, but also by the fact that you just did this that this is your first movie you know like this is and they were just like i can't believe that he did this like from knowing nothing really like not or at least not knowing how to you know direct i think directing a movie and and getting it all together and organizing it all like it's such a huge job like you should be very proud of yourself like yeah yeah it was definitely a huge task and and (laughs) i would i would i would say that I did, we did probably three or four times the amount of work that a normal person should do mm-hmm. to make a movie like this. Mm-hmm. Like we the plus interviews mm-hmm. and are I think fifteen on the film mm-hmm. and we described them all. We didn't know what the story was going to be at the beginning, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> came together as we were doing the movie. Yeah. Which was yeah. great as well. It was like it, it truly it truly is an organic like uh, thing that grew out of nowhere like I mm-hmm. remember at the beginning I thought like I'm gonna do this movie I'm not gonna show any image of violence uh, it's just gonna be beautiful images and people are just gonna love the images that they see and that's why they're not gonna hunt and I was like I'm, how am I gonna yeah I was like how am I gonna transmit the violence that they 